We got just a standard dry fly hook, uh, size 12. And again, like I said, you can go to a to a 14 easily. We're just it's going to be standard, 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 pretty much all the way with with proportions and all that. So we're going to go, um, you know, uh, we're going to set the wing first, which is going to be halfway between the point and the eye of the hook. And what we're going to use is we're going to use some teal. Uh, I've used just straight teal. It's, it has nice barring in it, so the wing is pretty variegated on this insect. So this teal with the barring in there really gives a nice effect. Uh, we can see that there. This happens to be dyed. I dye a lot of my own stuff. It's kind of a rust brown. Doesn't need to be. Your standard teal would definitely work quite nice for this fly, but uh, just gives it a real, real nice effect. You'll see when we, when we get done. We're just going to snip those butts off. And our standard pinch, pinch technique, again. And we're going to go right down, cover up those butts. Come back up to our tail set, or our wing set position. I'm going to make sure they're right on top of that hook. And a couple of soft wraps there. And now I can adjust this wing if I want it a little bit bigger. Can't make it any smaller, but I can make it a little bit bigger with it. Those soft wraps. And you know, standard sizing would be usable shank length or from the barb to right behind the eye of the hook would be the length of that wing. This I'm just going to make probably just a touch shorter than that. Um, one thing that you will find, you know, in, in certain big wings or whatever, it, as you fish it and it casts, it'll twist up uh, your leader or whatever. Because this is going to be kind of soft, you'll see when we get done, it, it's very movable. Uh, and again, that's why I'm coming down a little bit in size of, uh, of, of the wing, you know, which should be basically from there to there. But it's, it's going to be just a little short, but again, I found that won't twist up your, your wing as much. Uh, for tails, I'm just going to use standard microfibits, and they come in all various colors. Uh, again, I'm just kind of matching here with a, a little bit of a rusty olive brown. Um, size 12, we're going to do a little bit different technique here, and I'm going to split these tails. So I'm going to do four on a side, so I'm looking, I'm going to look for size 12, I should get pretty good flotation. And I'm going to set these a little bit longer. Uh, maybe just, you know, skosh over usable shank length again. Somewhere right in there. And where I finished my wings is where I'm going to set these right behind it, so I'm going to try to make this kind of a smooth uh, smooth transition from that wing down. 
and I'm going to hold those right up on top of the hook shank. One, I can kind of manipulate them a little bit towards me and hold up just a little bit like that as I wrap over the top. And this smooth transition right here, you're going to see is going to be going to make a big difference here when I put the when I put the abdomen on. So I'm going to end just a little bit shy. My tail set position would be right at the barb, so I'm going to end just a little bit shy there. And this is an old, old, old technique that I learned many, many years ago. A different way of splitting tails, and I'm just going to do it with thread. When I let that bobbin on twist there so that thread is flat. We're just going to make one wrap behind there and I'm going to come back in and make two. Now, now I'm right at tail set position because of me backing up and basically what I've done is I've created a little ball of thread back behind and as you can maybe see there it's already splaying and you can put a little pressure on with your thumb like so if you want and I got four on one side and I'm going to just back off make a wrap around That was a wrap around the far side, the first one. The second wrap is, and the wrap was on the, on the near side. And now that one is on the far side. Put one more in like that, and now it's locked. And it's pretty simple, relatively quick. I like them to flare a little bit. If you want to monkey with them, you can actually get them to, to sit together. I like to have a little bit of flare, as you can see right here and on the other side. I think it just gives a little bit better flotation. I'm going to flatten that thread again. The more and more you tie and you flatten that thread, you'll see the advantages of it. Not enough people do that. I'm going to come back up to the front in my little transition right there, which is going to be a key element for me when I go to put my abdomen in. Smooth that out. Now I've got a real nice smooth transition. What we'll do is a traditional old quill. Basically, we're just going to take peacock, and it just so happens uh, the color of this peacock really imitates the adult quite nicely, which is kind of a, a rusty, rusty brownish black. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the, the hurl off of here. And you can do all different ways, but if we're just doing onesies, I mean, if you were doing a whole bunch, you might want to strip that, you know, in a, in a peroxide uh, uh, solution. You can do quills. Quills work quite, or the eye of the peacock works quite nicely. It's variegated. It gives a real nice effect. Uh, but I was going to take a pencil with an eraser and go against the grain of that hurl and basically just strip it right off. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there, but it's got kind of that rusty, rusty brown color to it. And you're going to see when it goes onto the body, it comes out very, very nice. Makes it great for these March browns. And go back to just about tail set position.
and go up to just, just about behind the wing. I like to start these first ones by hand. It kind of sets them in place. And then lots of times I'll finish with a hackle pliers. And I'm just laying it right kind of edge to edge. By God, there's another break. Okay, so now I'm just going, coming up right in front of the wing here and standing it up. And we'll switch around to the front here. Split these wings, try to get an even amount material on both sides. All right, so we got those split. Try to make that thread flatten again a little bit. And now I'm just going to go back through. That's one wrap. Then I'm going to come around to the front. And that was on my far wing. I come around to the front, and I'm, I come over backwards. We'll do it one more time here. We go one through, so I'm going towards the far side, come around, one wrap, right back behind the wing because that's going to lock it. Now I'm going to come to the front, one wrap back behind me, that will lock it. Then a wrap back, back through again. And a wrap around again. Now I can go move back up to my front. And now I can pull, pull on that and you have pretty secure situation. Now I'm going to post it, post both of these wings with a couple of wraps, meaning I'm going to go right to the base, come around once, twice, reverse my wrap again, come around once, twice, twice, Go back through, and now I'm going in the same direction. And I've got a pretty durable stand-up wing. And this is what I was talking about now when you, when you cast this fly. What's going to happen is these wings are going to collapse like that. So it won't twist your leader as readily. And then they'll pop back up, especially when I have my hackle in there, you'll see. So now we're just going to kind of basically finish it off as a, as a standard dry. Um, lots of times you're going to read in books, you know, if I if install the hackle on my side, you know, dull side form and dry fly style dull side at me. What I do is I just come up underneath it.
underneath my thread and just put it there. Now I can adjust this wherever I want. So I'm actually installing it on that side or the far side of the hook and I can adjust it. I don't have to sit there and just try to put it in one spot. I can move it, do whatever I really, really want with it. In this case, I want a little bit of stem exposed. And I put it right between the wings. Come back up in front. Trim that off. And that is in there pretty doggone secure. I'm going to go right back to the base over the top of that again. I mean, that hackle is not going to come out of there. Now, another little trick. What happens here is I have a pretty thick base back here with the thread where I've installed the, the wing butts. But in front, you know, I've, I've almost gone to bare hooks. So it, it's thicker in the back than it is in the front. So as I'm going to go to hackle this fly, as I get to the front, I'm going to change the diameter of that hackle. So a little thing that you can do here is just, we'll, we'll just dub through this area, make it all nice and even. So when I go to make my hackle, my hackle will be all nice and even also. This is just a, again, a rabbit, kind of a blend. Uh, we got some rust in there, we got some black. Uh, kind of taking on the color of the natural. I'm just going to start one wrap right behind it. Now I can really put some pressure on that dubbing and it's going to hold. Just going to go behind that hackle. And go in front, just like you would do a parachute here. One in front, one behind, one in front, and any gap right underneath the wings now I've, I've filled in. And we're going to end a little shy so we're not crowding the head. if we can start a wrap or two with our hands, kind of get that thing tracking, that hackle stem tracking, and we can switch over to our hackle pliers. Now I'm going to space this out pretty good. And now I'm weaving, weaving that and going right back through it. So I'm going to pile quite a bit of this stuff on here. These come off relatively most of the time in some little bit heavier water. So we can
we can put quite a few wraps in here. And that's one thing that's so nice nowadays with our genetic hackle. The length and the quality is so unbelievable compared to what we used to have to use. I don't use a lot of head cement anymore. Basically, I try to do a double. Double uh, whip finish, like so. And typically, that's about all I need. <laughs> 